Welcome back guys. Today I'm out on a little hike just before the sun sets and I just want to have a little sit down and I got another another thing on my mind. Imagine that. Um, you know it's fall, it's harvest time so I just want to chat with you a bit about you know food and uh, you know just our awareness of where things come from and a way forward with all the supply chain shortages these days. Stay tuned. Oh, it's just so beautiful behind me, the sunset. Um, we're in for some weather tomorrow, so I thought I'd get out today and chat with you before we were stuck in the freezing rain. Um, the little river behind me there is sort of swollen over the banks. Uh, we've had quite a lot of rain lately, actually. It's a really late winter. Uh, it's about two degrees now, but uh, we've only had one little mini snowfall recently, so uh, it's a late winter. Let me know what it's like near you guys. Well, the other day I was at the uh, grocery store and I was sort of looking around at my usual items and I noticed these. These are chestnuts, my favorite. Um, favorite thing to have as a snack this time of year. I like to kind of uh, heat them up in the oven and or over the fire, of course. I did a video on that if you want to check it out and uh, just, you know, enjoy them. But I must say, I was a little disappointed when I went to the checkout and uh, the young man checking me out had to ask me, what are these? What is it? So of course I told him it's a chestnut and it kind of got me thinking, you know, like um, got me thinking a lot about our food and where it comes from and our knowledge of where it comes from. And uh, you know, and how I find that many times actually at the grocery store I found, um, you know, youth may not understand at the cash, like what, you know, food I'm buying. Like I've had people ask me what a turnip was, uh, what certain kinds of like lettuces were and stuff like that. So it always worries me a little bit because you know back you know in the past our ancestors you know and nuts were super important uh, part of the diet um, they are easily stored and uh, were really high in fat and protein and really good vitamins so it's something that was really essential knowledge you know, you know where to find these trees how to prepare them and things like that and it's really gotten lost over time which actually kind of got me really sad you know I'm at this grocery store with all this food like tremendous amounts of food there and you know there are people out there that may not know what some of the stuff is I mean that knowledge has been lost over time so it just kind of made me sad and you know I understand that sometimes some things are a little bit exotic like I don't uh, we don't have English chestnuts around here we have horse chestnuts um, and we don't have like pecans around here, so many people don't know what that is. So definitely there is a regional knowledge base that maybe not everybody has. But it's just, I can just sort of see little holes in our collective knowledge of these things that maybe, you know, they were there, um, you know, a long time ago. And now we just, we just don't have them anymore. So we're used to, you know, highly processed foods nowadays. We may not be used to all the ingredients of, you know, yesteryear that we used to hunt and gather and forage for. So it's something to think about, you know, you can just start to see the holes in our knowledge as a society right now. Um, and also, oh, take a look up there. Just some geese flying over. Sometimes you hear the hunters out, uh, probably not right now, but uh, hunting for geese this time of year in this area. And also, you know, deer hunters and stuff out there. So that brings up another issue of, uh, you know, we see a lot of, you know, lots of meats in the grocery store and things like that. And they're highly, you know, packaged and processed. And we really have no idea where they came from or what's all involved in that. So. That's another thing I wish people would learn more about uh, is where all their food came from. You know, even like milk, you know, a cow has to have a calf for there to be milk and how many kids know exactly where milk comes from these days and, you know, farm operations and stuff like that. Not everybody is so privileged to, to have seen uh, farm operations uh, and even processing of the milk and the meat and what's all involved and really how intensive that process can be. Um, you know, for say, for example, for for beef farming and some of the big feedlots out in the western Canada, uh, in the states, um, there's just a lot involved there, and it's important to know that, you know, that some of your <laughs> meats travel thousands and thousands of kilometers. Um, you know, and it's not necessarily in your backyard where these things are are being, um, you know, harvested and processed and, and shipped. So there's a lot of cost, transportation-wise, and you know, environmental-wise for some of these things. Um, so, you know, when people are hunting and gathering, um, you know, the meat's directly from the forest to the table, really. I mean, maybe you've got a butcher somewhere there in between, but you kind of know where your food's coming from, how it's processed. Um, we're, we're so, so far removed from that these days. Um, and then certain people get opinions about it that maybe not as well informed about, you know, farming and uh, hunting and things like that because we're so, a lot of us are so removed from living in cities and things like that and having access 
you know, to grocery stores and, and all this attractive food in front of us and, and things like that. So another important thing to know, I mean, is just to really do your research in terms of, um, you know, learning a bit about expanding your knowledge in regard to farming and food processing. And, you know, you may decide, you know, that you don't like, you know, what happens in the food processing plants or on farms or things like that. Uh, and you want to hunt for your own food because you can see the process from start to finish, essentially, if you do everything yourself. Um, there, I mean, of course, there's lots of, uh, you know, checkpoints and stuff for, you know, farming and, uh, you know, and the processing that, you know, it's humane and things like that. But, you know, I think it's really important that everybody, everybody knows um, what's going on with their food and where it comes from. And even includes, you know, uh, you know, fruit and veggie production as well. I mean, that can be extremely intensive, like banana farming and, you know, all the, the palm uh, plants for the palm oil and how much forest has to be destroyed to plant all these palm trees and things like that for our, uh, you know, for our margarines and things like that. So, you know, all these things I just start thinking about now, all from this little chestnut here at the, uh, at the grocery store. Um, and now too, I don't know if you guys have had issues in your area with prices of food going up. Um, you know, with the pandemic, um, prices of food have really skyrocketed and, you know, food security is a huge issue for a lot of people, generally speaking. And now it's really hard for many to afford food uh, and to find food, you know, uh, even pet food. It's, uh, there's supply chain issues everywhere right now. Um, so it's, uh, it's driving prices up big time and, uh, you know, production costs are going up as well. You know, can they find, can farmers find laborers to help, you know, with uh, the planting and the picking and the processing, you know, there is a bit of a labor shortage in, in certain sectors as well. So that's kind of driving things up too. I mean, we're just in some crazy times right now. Um, so it just makes me think about, you know, trying to stay local with my, my food production, trying to, you know, produce my own food, A, just for learning pro purposes and uh, just to have a secure source of food. So, you know, gardening, doing your vegetable farming. Um, you know, one year I made winter wheat so I could appreciate, um, you know, the wheat for making bread and stuff like that. So that, that was a super fun process. Um, and of course, now I have my own quail and so I have meat and eggs. So that's pretty neat. So I think we're going to have to start focusing moving forward and having that knowledge and, and you know, to, uh, to kind of produce our own food somewhat or supplement somewhat with what we can do. Um, get some veggies and, you know, maybe if you want to do chickens or, you know, for eggs and meat or whatever, just so you have some supplemental source of food for when these shortages kind of come around. Uh, I'm not trying to be alarmist about the whole thing, but I'm just sort of noting changes that have happened over the last two years and, you know, it just kind of gets me thinking about these things. So anyways, uh, I just wanted to give you guys a quick little video just discussing, you know, food, food, um, you know, food security uh, and learning uh, more about uh, things that used to feed us ancestrally, for example, and uh, how we can move forward in these crazy times to enhance our knowledge and to make sure that we have food for ourselves and, you know, our community um, when the supply chain issues all over the world have been very, very stressed and we may experiences, experience rather uh, shortages at the grocery store uh, with things we're used to. So anyways, tell me what you guys think. This is a huge topic. I literally just skimmed over it just with a few quick thoughts. Uh, let me know what you guys think below down in the comments in regard to this topic. I really want to hear from you guys. I really appreciate all those comments you guys gave me on my, on my last video about uh, uh, you know, the propane heater and sort of just also, you know, that some of the stuff about, you know, is off-grid living a fad. I really pretty appreciate your comments. They're really well thought out. Okay, well, we'll look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. I'm going to head out. The sun is going down. Have a great week. Take care.